Stuart Bloor. Welcome to my angling video for the month of September. It's a little bit different to the ones that I've done in the past, if you've been a, a regular uh, viewer of them. I'm introducing some uh, features on a regular basis now, so hopefully you will like the uh, updated version. Last a little bit longer as well. So get the kettle on, make yourself a cup of tea, get your feet up and enjoy the video. But first of all, we're going to look back and what did I get up to during August? Well, here are a few photographs that are going to appear on the screen. And of course, you can go to my angling website and see the stories behind those photographs. Enjoy. I'm on the canal, carp fishing. You can see my setup there to the side of me. I will be here for about three hours. I was here at first light and then I'll uh, continue until the boats start to come through. It's, it's better to do three hours at the right time than it is to fish all day long when it's not going to be productive. So this time of the year, certainly on this canal, the boats are up and down literally every five minutes, churning the bottom up, lots of silt, lots of uh, leaves and debris and twigs and branches and all that sort of stuff. You, you've got no chance carp fishing during the day, but that time at dusk and dawn when the fish will be feeding and they'll be unhindered and they'll be able to uh, feed in peace, that's when to target them. So my tip is quality over quantity. If you've only got three hours, that's okay because it's better to fish three hours at the right time than it is to fish 30 when it's not. And as you can see, I've got my wolf shirt on. It's a, a replica shirt from a few years ago now. And I'm in my wolves room as well. And one of my heroes is Billy Wright. And this is the original um, uh, newspaper, the Express and Star, when Billy Wright won his 100th cap for England. The first footballer to do so for our country. I love the history. And of course, playing for your country has got to be the greatest achievement that a, a footballer can ever do. But what about fishing for your country? Well, let me introduce my uh, guest for this month, Samantha Perkins, fishes for England. And so I asked her, what was it like when you fished for England for the very first time? So, what was it like to fish for England for the first time? Well. I was first picked when I was 12 to fish for the junior team, for the under 16 team. My dad was in Spain on the day of the trial, so my mum came with me. She didn't know anything about fishing whatsoever. But I got picked because she was proud of the And I called my dad, he was in Spain on the last embassy pairs, and uh, he was absolutely buzzing. Uh, the match was in Portugal. I didn't get picked for the team the first day. Uh, I managed to fish the second day. It was on a, a, a river in Portugal fishing a waggler, and I caught some little borger and some small carassio. You know, Kind of thing. And ended up second in my section and the feeling was just an absolute buzz really and sort of something that I just wanted to carry on throughout my life and when I was 16 I managed to get into the England team, the full England ladies team for the first time. Um, that World Travels was in Spain and uh, it was an absolutely fantastic venue and I've been very lucky with the venues that I've had over the years. Um, with some venues abroad, you can just get venues where you get that much practice in there, fish just disappear. Um, and I've been very lucky in that respect to get some brilliant venues. Uh, in Spain I ended up with 42 kilos on the first day, um, which is a big nice weight and uh, just an absolute great feeling. So, that's what it's like to fish for England. As you can see my rods are out, just cast in the pod and I'm hoping to get a fish for the camera as I always like to do. Get a little bit of activity. I'm using a sensitive bite alarm. I've got ATTs and you can put different 
uh, rollers in. So I've got one with uh, six magnets, so that's ultra sensitive. In effect, you can have a, a two uh, magnet roller or a four or a six, and it uh, changes the alarm really. So if you're fishing with a, a two or a six, it's the same alarm, but the roller makes all the difference. The magnets do really make a difference. You get little indications that you don't even pick up on the actual hanger or even the, uh, you know, the rod tip. So uh, brilliant, hoping to catch one tonight. And while I am waiting for this first elusive crucian carp to take, let me show you my bait. See it there? Pellet shaped boilies, so I'm fishing those on a hair rig. And if you read the articles, there will be articles because I will be uh, doing a lot of crucian carp fishing this month, then check out my uh, website and I'll give you all the rundown on the rigs, the setup, and the whole lot. But for now, it's catching that fish with a camera that's important. That was fascinating. I noticed a small shoal of tiny, tiny perch in the margins. So I got the camcorder on them to capture them. And then they suddenly scattered. And as you just saw there on the video, a perch of about a pound moved in. And he came right along the edge, I mean, literally just uh, scraping the, uh, the side. And he went right along and the perch, the tiny ones, well they soon got out of the way. That's the nature of the beast out there. It's fish eat fish for sure. We're well into dusk now and I've just had a crucian on. Unfortunately I had a hook pull so I uh, didn't uh, connect with it for more than just a few seconds but I'm very confident I'm going to catch that fish for the camera. while I'm waiting for a crucian, listen to that. Common pipistrels on my bat box. Brilliant. I'm into one now. Excellent. Show you that in a moment. I might have another one on. We all like photographs, don't we? And one of the features that I want to keep in the videos on a monthly basis is a gallery. So I'm encouraging folks to send me their fish related uh, pictures. And you can do that on my Facebook page. And when I'm ready to put my videos together, I will be asking for photographs. So it will literally be first come, first served. So of course, make sure you're on my Facebook page and uh, you can get in there. Here's a couple of photographs I've just pulled off my uh, wall. There's my youngest daughter that was taken a few years ago with Kenny Miller. She used to uh, love Kenny Miller, her favorite player. So that's uh, Miriam with Kenny Miller. And there's my eldest with Lee Naylor. So she was uh, a fan of Lee Naylor. And Lee, 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 <laughs> Lee Naylor actually is, uh, is a fisherman as well. So uh, that's great. Got a fisherman, wolf's fisherman on the, uh, on the video this month. So let's have a look at the gallery. First thing I noticed when I bought my first Gray's box, and I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later, um, is that it's it's well made. 
and I've been fishing now for six months using this particular box and it's certainly lasted and I do put my tackle through its paces so if there are any weaknesses in terms of design or uh, other such faults then they certainly come through. Let me show you what the box is like as you can see it's closed there good strong lock as well doesn't uh, doesn't go anywhere inside you've got the main compartment of the box and then you've got two drawers which uh, open out and the main feature I think that probably shows up on the uh, on the camera there is the the rig board and this is the box that I use for roach, perch, chub, crucian carp that sort of thing which are very similar in terms of items needed so I've got some uh, rigs there as we know you can't spend time tying rigs at the bank when you want to get on with your fishing so I've got some different types of rigs there for roach and uh, crucian carp and the great thing is you can actually colour coordinate them so that you can uh, keep them in nice uh, easy uh, compartments as it were on the uh, the rig board and on the rig board itself let me just have a look there yeah, you open it up and you've got some uh, smaller compartments there now in one of them I've still got some uh, some things there for the rig board but there I've got some uh, some stops some little gripper stops which I, I use in, in, in rig building so that fits in there and then of course you've got these boxes and they do clip up uh, just pull up very very easily and they're great uh, they're great for putting all your different uh, bits and pieces in you can take these out as well so you can make them bigger or smaller depends on what you want to put in there you got those and they do clip very very well so once they're in there nice and tight that's not going anywhere which is important with a with a box isn't it the last thing you want is for all your stuff to get mixed up and then you've got these smaller ones again very very um, well made in terms of fit in there uh, that one as you can see I've got some uh, some beads in there so imagine all those beads all in your tackle box if they got out It'd take you forever to sort them out that goes on there clips on and that's sorted Again, just clip the, uh, the side, oh, that one's a bit stuck, <laughs> clip the side like that and up it comes, very, very, uh, very, very well made. Again here you can, you, can take, um, you can take the compartments out, the dividers out should I say, to make the compartments longer or shorter depending on what you want. Then you've got these uh, side, uh, side ones as well, again take the uh, dividers out, as you can see in there, I've got different types of uh, line that's, uh, that's just fitting nicely in there. Some little floats there that I use for uh, for, pie, for perch, live baiting. Got some plummets, different types of uh, plummets there. On the top, I've got some more leads and bits and pieces there. Uh, and in the other one, got all my hooks. Got some uh, boiler hooks that I use for uh, for crucian carp when I'm uh, fishing a, a small boilie. And then I've got uh, some braid scissors need to change my uh, alarms over to a six magnet I've got my screwdriver there my cage feeders if you follow my angling journal on a regular basis you know that I fish with cage feeders a lot so I think it's a, it's, it's a great box and um, the proof of the pudding is that I've been fishing with this now for about six months and I liked it so much that I've ended up buying four in total so I've actually got them for different types of fishing now because you know what it's like if you swap in all the while and changing and taking things out of one box putting them into another you always end up leaving something behind so I've now got four of these boxes this is for my roach, perch, crucian carp got one for my predator fishing uh, zander and pike got one for my barbel and uh, one for my carp so I don't get anything left behind any longer brilliant boxes certainly 10 out of 10 for me the only um, maybe thing you could possibly have against it is, is the cost if you're going to buy four it could be quite expensive but if you're looking at one then certainly definitely uh, worth pursuing so for me thumbs up I'm carp fishing on the canal and I've just had a, a bream on a, a double boilie and it came off the edge so what a shame it was about uh, about a pound. This is my setup for canal carp. You can see that there. And then a short hook length. It's a braided hook length. And in there, pellets and a few boilies as well. The 
carp in the canal that I fish are very elusive, the proverbial needle in a haystack. I'm going to do a few sessions during September. So of course, as always, check out my articles and find out how I get on. My hit rate is about one fish in five sessions. So that gives you an idea of the sort of venue that it is. I do a lot of exploring. I try new places. Sometimes it comes off and obviously in many instances it doesn't but you never know dear until you get out there and try it and there are one or two places that I've located carp on the canal and I certainly enjoy it and it's not about the numbers of fish that you catch for sure but when you do get into one it's brilliant I hope you've enjoyed the video. My pet, <laughs> pet. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the video. My pet ferret, Paris, has desperately been trying to uh, get our attention while we've been filming in the living room. So I decided to get him out and get him on at the end of the video. There he is having a big yawn. He's quite, uh, he's quite tired. I hope you've enjoyed it. Lots of different things in there, lots of new features. And as I say, they will be regular as well. And I've got even more planned for future videos. Make sure you check out my angling website, anglingdiary.com. It carries the updates on a weekly basis. I update my angling website every Saturday. They say don't go on the stage with the children and animals. He's been lively there. I update it every Saturday, so make sure you check that out. I've also got a Twitter account as well, and I do tweet from the, uh, the water's edge, so you can follow my adventures from there. And of course, I've already mentioned my Facebook page. Make sure you like that, and that pretty much is like a mailing list in, in a way, really, because I post all my news and uh, bits and pieces on there. So, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Tight lines. <laughs>